Hello, um, I'm Carlos Soyuz. I'm a child and adolescent psychiatrist and I'm the coordinator of the year four and I'm um, here to tell you a little bit about the introduction to psychiatry. So this is the first of four videos. This is the introduction to psychiatry, some facts and some why it's important. And then I have three other videos that go together with this one, one on how to take a psychiatry history, how to do a mental state examination, and then a quick run through the most common conditions. So this time I am going to tell you a little bit about uh, the introduction to psychiatry. Two things. Uh, why you need to learn about psychiatry and some words that will help you understand what's coming after that. So why is psychiatry important or why does a doctor need to bother learning psychiatry, especially if he's not going to go into psychiatry? Well, in medicine, you come across lots of people. Um, they are usually patients. They come to you with a complaint. You know, I, uh, my, my, my legs are hurt so much I can't barely walk or I've got terrible tummy pains or um, I, 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 I have such terrible tummy pains I'm going to die or, you know, I've got chest pain or, you know, I can't breathe properly or I'm tired all the time. What doctors do is we interview these people, we do examinations, uh, we explore, and then we arrive to a diagnosis. And we give people diagnoses that then allow us to treat them. So we might say, well, uh, I know why your joints ache, you've got arthritis, or I know why you've got tummy pains, you, you've got endometriosis, because, um, you know, I know about uh, rheumatology and I know about gynecology or uh, I can say that your tummy ache is because of a hernia because I know surgery or I can tell you that your chest pain is because you're having a heart attack and that's very important or uh, I know that you've got a chest infection because I know about microbiology and, and chest medicine and I know you're tired because you've got a myeloma because uh, I know about cancer because that's what you learn in medical school. Now, you will have patients who will come to you with complaints, not that dissimilar to those, but will be complaints about their minds. So somebody might come to you and say, Doctor, I hear voices in my head and I can think that other people are able to read my thoughts. And this is very distressing because everybody is planning to come and kill me. Yes. So this is not dissimilar to your other experience. This is a patient who comes to you for help with complaints and your job is to diagnose them. If you know psychiatry and you know the conditions, you know how to take a history, you know how to do a mental state, you would be able to help these patients as well and say, yes, I know what's going on. You've got a diagnosis as well, a schizophrenia, and I can treat you. So in that way, people with mental health problems are no different from your other patients. Uh, it's just that um, you need to know psychiatry so you can diagnose psychiatric conditions as well as being able to diagnose other conditions. So there's a small part of patients. You might say, well, I don't want to be a psychiatrist, so what are the chances that I will come across somebody and that I need to diagnose? Well, uh, you might not think that there are a lot of people who come to see a doctor because of the mental health problem. But of the other people, uh, a lot of them have mental health problems as well as the problems that uh, they bring to you. Um, in At any time uh, in the general population, one in six people suffer from a mental health problem. That is at least one of six uh, of your patients. Um, and that's at a given time. If you uh, factor it by a year, so within a year, one in four people will have a mental health problem. So you do need to know psychiatry because you need to be able to diagnose those people who come to you with a psychiatric diagnosis, but also because you need to be able to look after the mental health of your other patients. And this is not a small proportion. In GP practice, 50% uh, of the patients have significant mental health problems. And this is a public health problem as well. So of all the activity in the health sector, mental illness accounts for almost 40% of illness, um, of the activities of, um, 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 uh, of the health sector. Uh, that's in rich countries. In the NHS, uh, the um, 23% of the activity of the NHS is dedicated to mental health. Uh, that's what people do, yes? So um, that's not the same thing as funding. Only 11% of the budget of the NHS goes to uh, 
um, uh, budget for mental illness. That means that the part of medicine which is not geared towards mental illness does a lot of the treatment of mental illness. A GP sees more mental health people with mental health problems than a psychiatrist. There is another two things that are important. One of them is the number of beds have had have declined. So this is uh, so so this is the number of of beds um, in general um, health uh, over the last thirty years. They've been reduced quite a bit. But if you see it, psychiatric beds, they've actually been cut in more than half in the last thirty years. That means there is a lot of people with mental health problems in the community because there's not so many psychiatric beds. I won't tell you any more facts. If you want facts and a study of the impact, I recommend that you see these documents by MIND and by NICE. There are links on Blackboard where uh, you get all sorts of figures of just how big mental health is. The last bit I wanted to mention is if when you see a patient that comes to you with um, uh, a mental health problems, say sadness and depression and lack of energy, and all you know is neurobiology and neurochemistry. Uh, it's very likely that when um, you see somebody with this kind of complaints, you're only able to think of it in terms of um, um, uh, neurotransmitters. Um, and that's, I think, I fear is what's happening because uh, in the last uh, 10 years, the number of prescriptions for antidepressants has doubled. And that is through people presenting to their GPs with symptoms of depression and GPs not being able to do anything other than give tablets. And this is quite a problem. So I've told you why you need to know about mental health. So first, you need to be able to um, take a history, do a mental state and diagnose people with mental health problems because they present in all settings. And you need to know about psychiatry, just like you need to know about rheumatology, surgery and cancer. But you also need to know about it because your patients in rheumatology, in surgery and in cancer also have mental health problems. I've also told you that uh, it is very important uh, in terms of size uh, of, of mental health problems. And I've also told you that if you only uh, know anatomy and no psychology, you're going to do a disservice to your patients. So that's the first thing I wanted to tell you why. Now I'm going to spend a few minutes talking a little bit about words that can be confusing and that will help you understand what comes next in the other videos. So how does it work? Uh, this uh, psychiatrist, you're a doctor and uh, a patient comes to you and um, usually uh, the patient does something, shows some behaviours, and then it tells you how they're feeling, that's emotions. And uh, if you ask, they will share with you, you, you know, their thoughts. Uh, as a doctor, you interact with that presentation because those are the symptoms. And, and from interacting with patients, you infer what's going on in their minds. Because their minds are what produces behaviour, emotions and thoughts. Minds is, is a psychological concept. Uh, when you infer what's going on in people's minds, you make judgments. You say, that, well, that is a normal mind. That's what I would expect anybody to do. Or that behavior is not normal, but is appropriate given the circumstances. Or you say, no, actually, that mind is a bit disturbed. It's not what, the way it should be. There are issues with this mind. And you might even say those issues are to do with mental health because I'm making a judgment in terms of how healthy that mind is. And if you do that, then you say, well, then the, the mind is not healthy. That means the mind is ill, so a mental illness. Or the mind is disordered, is not working as it should be. Or the mind is not working in such a way that uh, I know it fits a pathology like schizophrenia. So, uh, the mental state examination is how you um, uh, engage with a patient to uh, make an assessment of their mind. The history is important in order to understand uh, uh, whether the responses of the mind are appropriate to understand the context and, and, and be able to make judgments about that mind. And then you need to know about conditions in order to be able to diagnose if uh, those symptoms fit in conditions. And those are the other three um, um, uh, videos that I'm going to do after this one. Um, but uh, let's go back to the idea of behavior. So we make judgments on behaviors. So if you could make a list of all the behaviors people can do. So uh, people do 
all kinds of things. That's what behaviours is. So some people like running, some people like dancing, some people uh, like theatre, some people behave as if they were Superman, some people um, uh, are scared, some people uh, want to kill themselves, some people uh, think they're being watched all the time. Different types of things people do. And when we observe people's behaviour, we infer that there is a mind behind them. And normally we say, OK, this person is running a lot. That's because they want to get fit. So we infer what's going on in their minds. Yes? Uh, but sometimes we watch behaviours and we make the uh, conclusion that actually those behaviours can only be explained if there is something wrong with their minds. Yes, uh, so we say, yeah, uh, uh, you know, to to want to kill yourself, there is something wrong with your mind. Or if you think people are chasing you, uh, there is uh, something wrong with your mind. Yes, uh, so we make a judgment as, as to how healthy that mind is, and those kind of attributions of behaviors to a mental, mentally ill mind, we call mental health. Yes. Of those, some will fit a, a, a category that uh, uh, we can put under a diagnosis in ICD-10. So there is ICD-10 that uh, has all the diagnosis and we will see that those behaviours fit conditions. And those behaviours that fit conditions are what we call psychiatry. So it's a, a, a long-winded way of saying there is all the behaviours people can do and we understand those behaviours most of the time. We understand why people do what they do. Sometimes we don't understand why people do what they do and we attribute this to an, them having an ill mind. And sometimes that ill mind can be attributed to a condition, i.e. a psychiatric condition. So how is, that's how those three words mean. So uh, that's the second thing we've done today talk a little bit about words and what I've told you is that um, the, the key word here is the word mind which is what produces behaviours, emotions and thoughts. M much more than this but we'll uh, come to that when we do a mental state examination. I told you that um, uh, the science that studies the mind is psychology uh, and that uh, from the word mind, we take the word mental and we make attributions and adjectives about what goes, what goes on in people's minds. And we say mental well-being and mental health. If we seen that there is an issue with the health of the mind, uh, we often say mental health issues. Um, and sometimes we say, well, there is an, that mind is unhealthy. This is a mental illness. Or we say this is a disordered mind and sometimes is a condition. And the study of mental health conditions is psychiatry. OK, so that uh, finishes the bit about words, which together with a bit about why mental health is important was the point of this um, short video. Um, and uh, this is the beginning there. If you uh, follow on, there's three other videos, one on how to take a history, how to do a mental state examination and how to do conditions. I hope to see you for those. Thank you.